As the new administration of President Bola Tinubu settles in for the serious business of governance, quite a bit has been happening. Nigerian Shippers Council is also not resting on its oars. On The Shipper today, we shall delve into a key aspect of maritime business that has been the cause of massive headache for shippers, demurrage and detention. It's loaded. We tried to tackle it in one episode and it was impossible. This means there is a second part that's coming your way next week when we will be discussing what Nigerian Shippers Council is doing to help shippers navigate these issues. We shall also join our tidbits segment for happenings in the maritime industry across the globe. My name is Rekia Dekru Yagoyaju. Do stay tuned. Nigerian Shippers Council Day to serve you well. No matter the problem, we go solve them for you. Yes, so the Nigerian Shippers Council they feel in a parole now for every level. And as soon as goods they move from port A, go enter port B with a measure within on a needle. For the Nigerian Shippers Council, we don't shop proper to fit here you well, work with you well, and help you fit serve your customers them better, no matter where them day. As we country port economic regulator, the Nigerian Shippers Council get every every now to fit make government consider the problem we shippers them they face visit with office phone number four or to buy your daily show your daily lane a papa email us for nsc at shipperscouncil.gov.ng we website now www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng Nigerian Shippers Council with a meet now for the port of Nani. Welcome back. Today's episode is tagged Demorage and Detention 101. While Shippers Council seeks the approval of the National Universities Commission for the course, let's share some insights. How much does the public know about these twin matters? Most of the time, the demurrage is detrimental to the society because every importer that pays demurrage, we at the end put it into the cost of his sales so that he can put the money he spent. At the end of the day, it's you and I that are going to pay for all those demurrage they're talking about, consumers. Who are the last uh, consumers? The people, the citizens. So uh, I think uh, uh, when all secular means, I think the better for, for the industry. Lucy Nyambi helps us navigate the twin phenomena. Nigerian Shippers Council, as the nation's port economic regulator, has a mandate to ensure effective, efficient, and competitive service delivery at Nigeria's seaports, as well as in every facet of the maritime sector. The council, through its complaints unit, handles tons of cases pertaining to demurrage and detention charges for users and providers of shipping services. The pivotal role that the agency has played has saved importers and exporters billions of naira. Demurrage refers to charges the shipper pays for the use of the container within the terminal beyond the free time period while detention refers to the charges the shipper pays for the use of the container outside of the terminal or depot beyond the free time period, which is usually five days. This free period is expected to be realistic to allow the shipper load and deliver the container for export and also pick up, unload and return the empty container for import. The head, complaint unit of Nigerian Shippers Council, Mr. Daniel Orume speaks more on demurrage and detention, the causes and how these twin headaches can be prevented. The container is very important in shipping because that's the box that carries all the cargo and the shipping lines, the consignees and the truckers, all are focused on that container. And that container is a shipping lines property. They are always on lease. And that container is supposed to earn revenue at each time. So time is very important when it comes to the issue of demurrage, detention, and storage. And so now the charge for the delayed use of a container within the terminal, and that charge comes into play when a full container is not picked up during the free peak days allotted. Then after those three days, there's a charge that keeps accumulating every day until that container is picked up. That is demurrage. It's always on a loaded container and it is within the terminal. 
Now, detention church, on the other hand, is a charge for the delayed use of the container outside the terminal. And that also comes into play. That same charge comes into play when the, the loaded container that is not unpacked. It's, uh, the unpacked one is not returned to the designated terminals. And then detention charge keeps accruing after the three days allotted. And it can accrue as long as that container is not returned. It only stops when that container is returned and an interchange card issued to the consignee. And then that uh, charge stops. And that is why I say time is of the essence because everything works with time. If you are able to keep to time, then those charges will not be applicable. The causes are just simply that when there is delay in picking up the container from the terminal, probably due to uh, circumstances, uh, whether they have not paid custom duties or they've not, uh, they don't have uh, funds to now clear the cargo from the port, that delay will now cause the demerage to start running after the three days. And as I said, it's avoidable if only the consignees can plan. Because whenever they import, there's always days before the cargo arrives at the port of destination. So if you know you have to pay some amount, you should be able to plan ahead to have those amounts ready. Even try ahead of time to do some of the payments. It will help so that when the cargo arrives, all you need to do is just to now get all the necessary documents for the clearing procedures. Assistant Directors Complaints Unit of the Council, Danjuma Buba and Alaji Bashir Ambi, spoke extensively on the activities of the Complaints Unit in handling cases of demerage and detention charge for complainants. There was a case of this detention and demerage D&D. &D. Met it on one of the consignee by name FSH Cook Charles against a de de consolidating company in Nigeria. That FSH Cook imported cargo from Sri Lanka and the gross weight was heavy, unknown to him. And unfortunately, he was misinformed by the shipper in Sri Lanka, Columbus. He could not ascertain until when he came to Nigeria we realized that even the freight was to be paid in Nigeria unknown to him. And already he, he claimed, no, he claimed, he told us and he gave us that he has paid significant amount of money to, to his shipper overseas. But here they said, free prefect, unknown to him. So the cargo was placed on there. So we had to intervene. At the end of the day, uh, the consignee took delivery and it was sorted out. That's one of uh, the celebrated cases of which the complainant, the, the consignee even shouted that if not because of shippers council, in fact, he don't know what will, will happen to him. And it may cost him his life because he, he, he said that he borrowed the money from the bank. And with all this, where will he get what the consolidating company is asking him to do? That's that one aside. Another funny case concerning this demorage issue and detention was a case from Kano. We got that case, received that case from our zonal coordinating office there in Kano, not Western Nigeria, concerning one Ezeko Nigeria Limited, whereby he took delivery of Costco shipping containers down to Kano. And those containers were there, abandoned. After he took delivery of his own personal cargo, he claimed that he has given the containers to his truckers to bring it back to Lagos. How they brought it to Lagos, whether it arrived Lagos, whether the container did not arrive Lagos, that was not his own problem. Two years after, before he now re shipped another cargo down to Nigeria from China. And Costco had to place Leon on that, including the demerage. So the cargo was detained. He ran to Shippers Council, together with the former agents that handled the container, the previous container that was 
They claim the container had an accident in Nevada. They brought, they brought police reports, all manner of things. And a fidevi was brought. So at the end of the day, we resolve that issue. Costco, they listened to us. And the cargo was released. Numerous cases. Honestly speaking, to be candid, if you are in complaint here, you are more or less like in a CID office. CID because you will be seeing all manner of cases. Some cases have merits. Some do not have merits. And as an unbiased umpire in the industry, we are trained here to be fair, to ensure that ours, uh, every stakeholder is happy but the providers and the consumers of service. Intention and demorage have become the primary challenges in the Nigerian situation under the matter of industry generally. Most of the cases we are handling as of today fall down on demorage and tension. Most of the cargo that's going through attracts or attracts a lot of demorage period. And this is as a result of a lot of challenges beyond the control of the consigning all the agents. Most of the period that resulted that causes the moral in Nigeria today is a lot of infrastructure decay. Consignment to leave Lagos and be, to be delivered in the bottom, canon or far up north. Before it comes back, it takes an average of 10 to 20 days. And this period attracts a lot of demolish. In fact, some of them even exceeded up to a month because of accidents. That's the tension. That is the tension because it's outside the box. Because of either accidents on the road, bad road, traffic, a lot of interceptions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's a lot of the ignorance of even the owner, the consignees. When the cargo gets to their warehouses, they don't even know that there is a cost associated to it. They delay the offloading of the consignment. In fact, some of them even use the containers for their personal use, thinking they are paid because they have dropped what they call container deposits. And we have cases where even the consignee will tell you, I've already paid for it. When we ask you, why are you telling the container that does not belong to you, it belongs to the shipping company? These are lease equipment. The container is a lease equipment. And every day counts money, retention fee on the consignee. So you are expected to offload. And also, the truck owners are another added problems to the retention in Nigeria. The truck owners, due to their inefficient or deliberate ignorance or carelessness because the liability on the container does not fall on the truck owner. They delay the process of returning the containers. That is why when you are traveling on a Nigerian road today, you will meet a lot of trucks in some villages packed, relaxing, enjoying themselves with containers behind their trucks. They don't even know that they are causing a lot of cost on the businessman that gave them the contract to return the containers. So this is another problem. The truck owner is ignorant. The importer sometimes doesn't know the implication. It's only the freight forwarders who are aware of the practice that are supposed to guide them and let them know the implication of this cow. Issues also we are having is sometimes the consignees do not give appropriate email addresses so that whenever they are going to be contacted on these issues, they get notices that, see, this equipment is lying somewhere, please return it. At most times, they will come and say, we didn't see any notice. Because most of the email addresses supplied are not correct. And so they are unable to reach them. And sometimes even the addresses, you find out that they are not our authentic addresses. You give an address, you go, when you visit that place, you see it's a different thing altogether there. And it's always difficult to locate them. So communication is very key in and this aspect of this logistic chain, so that whenever you are needed, you can act promptly. This issue of uh, this concept of just in time is what we actually need because it will help eliminate costs at all aspects in this logistic chain. Over the years, free time periods have been reduced and tariffs for demurrage and detention have increased considerably on a global level. There are indications that shipping lines and terminal operators abuse this collection of demurrage and detention charges. Ordinarily, before the arrival of the vessel, most customers have been notified, even at the top booking. 
They've already informed them the expected time of arrival. So after the vessel arrival, they will still send reminders to them. They tell them to come and take delivery. But because the earlier you pick your container and return our equipment, the better for us. So I don't see how a reasonable shipping company will benefit from delaying the equipment it's using to service its customer. Let me give you an instance now. They are the, for 40 footer I keep. It's very scarce for my lineup because we have a lot of exports. Now that uh, uh, the, the, the volume of export is increasing in Nigeria, now we need more empty. And uh, when you get more exports, you get more commission, you get more charges from exports even than the imports. So I don't see how a reputable shipping company will benefit from the delay of his equipment that is using to transact his business. The terminal is a transit. The more cargo flows, the more we make our money. So no terminal will be happy for a container sitting for 60, 100, 360, to how many years. In terms, we pay for space. We pay Nigerian port authorities for space. It's, it's, not, entire, it's not too good for us. What you just watched is Demerage Anti-Tension 101. 102 is coming your way next week. So it brings problem between agent and importer, and as a result of that, the cargo will lie down until that issue is uh, resolved. I would think that it is really possible that some of the individuals who are holding onto containers actually do not even recognize that there is an obligation on them you know, to return this. It's now time to join Abike Idobu in our Tidbits Corner. In pursuit of its quest to achieve full automation of the ports, the Regulatory Service Department of Nigerian Shippers Council held a training session on the e-registration portal process ERPP for regulated port service providers and users. The ERPP is a web-based application that automates the submission of key performance indicators, standard operating procedures, and the operating tariffs of the service providers in the Nigerian maritime sector. The lead trainer, Mr. Afolabi Michael, spoke to the shipper, explaining that with the ERPP in place, data collection becomes easier as it will assist the council in harmonizing data and making informed decisions as it relates to the Nigerian maritime sector. Uh, data standardization is very important to Nigeria Shippers Council. So we have a dedicated division that works on data standardization, that is standard services division of a regulatory service department. So what we do there is when the service providers submit their information, their data, they take delivery of the data, then DEX officers analyze the data and review, evaluate, then submit to the management for decision making. The portal has been active for about a year now and the service providers, some of them are already on the portal. We did our last year KPI evaluation based on the information gathered from the portal. So this year we want to make sure that we bring everybody on board to make sure that we fade out paper collection of data completely because the world is actually going out of traditional way of doing things to an automated you know system so we want to make sure that going forward we get our data from the terminal and then other service providers via the portal to make sure that everything is digitalized the attendees who were from various terminals and shipping companies spoke to the shipper on the training it's really interesting I've got to learn new things and uh, how to go about it. And if I have challenges, what to do and also whom to communicate with. I think for us, it's going to make additional impacts in the maritime sector generally. You know, what we're used to is a manual. And uh, from what we are seeing in the 21st century now, as the world is evolving, so the maritime oil industry is cashing up. And so the shippers country is always leading. So for them, I would say it's a laudable idea, and for the shipping line also, and for the sector in general. With this training, at least, is an eye-opener to all stakeholders. Uh, we know we've been having issues uploading data into your domain. But with this new educative session we've seen today, 
we'll definitely have an improvement on the dissemination of data, interaction between us and Nigerian Shippers Council. Not only to us as terminal operator, but I think the entire maritime industry within Nigeria is a good thing. I give kudos to Nigerian Shippers Council. The ERPP was created by the Regulatory Service Department using in-house technical expertise of the ICT unit of the Council. The development of the ERPP has led to maritime sector service providers and users being graded and issued with various award certificates. Yes, indeed. The requirements and criteria for the quarterly award was collated using the data gathered from the ERPP platform. Digitalization of services and operations, compliance to regulations, resolution time for claims and refunds were some of the criteria considered. Roro Terminal was given to Ports and Terminal Mode Service Limited, PTML. AP Molar Terminals Limited was awarded Best Performing Container Terminal. Grimaldi Agency Nigeria Limited was awarded Best Performing Shipping Company for Roro, that's Roll-On or Roll-Off. Three companies tied for the Best Performing Shipping Company for Container. They are Mex Nigeria Limited, Ocean Network Express Nigeria Limited, and CMA CGM Nigeria Shipping Limited. The award for Best Performing Bonded Terminal for the first quarter of 2023 went to Medlog Logistics Services Nigeria Limited and S Libra Terminal Limited. Congratulations to them all. We're still urging stakeholders in the maritime sector to visit our website www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng in order to gain comprehensive insights into all our services and to promptly communicate any concerns or complaints they may have. Let's now review the entries in our complaint log for the week 11th to 17th June 2023. During this period, we recorded a total of five complaints, all of which are ongoing investigations. The nature of these complaints encompass issues such as arbitrary charges, unjustifiable charge of demurrage, fraud, and lien. It's now time to catch up on the latest updates in the world of global shipping. Mintra has signed a strategic partnership with an extended reality training program to bring a massive augmented reality and virtual reality training to the maritime industry. The companies said that Aruva's platform integrates seamlessly with Mintra's train portal and will give Mintra's customers access to immersive and risk-free training. Siren Berge, Chief Technology Officer Mintra, said, at a time when the maritime and energy industries are going through a huge change, it is important that multi-format compliance training solutions keep pace. The Malaysian government is pressing ahead with plans for a massive greenfield terminal on Kari Island in Port Klang, the world's 12th largest container port. Plans for a fourth terminal at Port Klang on Kari Island dates back to 2017 and are now moving ahead following a feasibility study. The planned port project was flagged off by Malaysian Transport Minister YB Lok Siu Fook at the opening ceremony and reception of the Langkawi International Maritime and Aerospace 2023 Exhibition Lima 2023. The 28 billion Malaysian ringgit Kari Island port project will comprise both container and conventional beds capable of handling 30 million TEU and 20 million tons of conventional cargo once fully developed. And that's it on Titbit for this week. Till next time. The Nigerian Shippers Council is now better poised with responsive systems in place to help you and other shippers get seamless, stress-free transition for your clients' goods from point A to B. Today at the Nigerian Shippers Council, timeliness, orderliness, transparency and efficiency is all we care about. Put your complaint through to our helpline. Visit us at number 4, Ayodele Shoyode Lane at Papa Lagos or reach us on www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng. Nigerian shippers cancel. We meet you at the point of your need.
Nigerian Shippers Council, we meet you at the port of your needs. On this note, we round up the shipper for this week. As I said earlier, Demurrage and Detention 102 is another package you must not miss. It's been my pleasure, as always, to bring you this episode. Do have a splendid Demurrage and Detention Free Week. Mm -hmm.